Hello and welcome to another episode of Chatting with the Cardinals. I'm your host, Cooper Welch. Uh, and, and again, uh, we decided to do this series just to have a way to talk with you through whatever happens with COVID-19. Uh, we'll be here and we're going to continue to have these videos posted for a while, uh, just chatting with coaches, getting their perspective on what's happening right now, uh, maybe a few student athletes as well. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome today's guest, the head volleyball coach for Lamar University, Jordan Lay. Thank you for being in here. Thank you for having me. And per the CDC guidelines, we're not gonna shake hands or anything. Nope, nope, so, we uh, air high five. Yes, air high five, exactly. Perfect. All Perfect. right, Perfect. so uh, really the first thing we wanted to talk to you about is some of the more serious aspects of this, mm -hmm. how it's impacted your program, uh, what the future looks like mm -hmm. for you know, Lamar Athletics in general and, and you specifically. And then we'll kind of wrap it up with more of the lighthearted stuff. Okay. So uh, if you're ready to go. Fire away. All right. So first, walk us through the day that they announced the decision to cancel uh, both the spring sports, but also your recruiting activities put in the dead period mm -hmm. and everything else that has happened. What went through your head as those announcements were coming down? Uh, yeah, to be honest, it was shocking. Um, I think for everyone, it just became very real in that moment. I mean, we've been been hearing for for weeks upon weeks about this mm -hmm. this new virus and how it's spreading across Asia and Europe. And I think so many times um, that we forget in this country that we're not immune to these things. And just the fact that it hit in our own backyard, I think, was jarring for everybody. Um, I think immediately you. you your thoughts turn to your your student athletes how you're going to approach them how you're going to be able to talk to them through this situation but and also it's really important that as a coach at that time that you remain calm you remain thorough in your processes you may remain as clear as possible in your communication and, and be open with sharing that information with your student athletes so i think all those things race to your head and they race through you very quickly mm -hmm. and so um it's processing it all taking it all in and figuring out your your plan of action i think all hit you all at once all right and what are some of the things that you're doing as a team while these things like practices and, and i know you guys weren't super heavily involved mm -hmm. with practices but there were spring games coming up for mm -hmm. you uh so what are you doing right now while you can't have spring games mm -hmm. while you can't have practices while you can't really even be recruiting right now yeah. you know all travel is basically banned what are the things that you are doing uh, you and your your staff members, what what does the here and now look like for you guys? Yeah, you know, funny enough, we're doing a lot of what we're doing here right now. Okay. We're, we're thinking of ways to stay engaged, not only with our current student athletes, but uh, prospective student athletes as well. Right. Coming up with a game plan, essentially, like you would for any match. You know, you, you go through a process of scouting and, and developing a scouting report or a plan of action. And that's what we're going through right now. How do we stay engaged with our current student athletes? How do we make sure that as we go into online courses that they're logging in daily, that they're being diligent, that they're still being, you know, a quote unquote normal person. They're right. wake up every morning in the shower and they're going through all that. They're changing clothes <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, they're really dedicating time yeah. uh, to those classes. How are we going to you know, help help them through that process? Right. How also are we going to be able to keep in contact with potential um, student athletes? Mm -hmm. um, how are we communicating with them? What's going on here at Lamar? What our processes are? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, how are we keeping them actively engaged as you know, prospective student athletes? Right. So that's what we're doing right now is mm -hmm. formulating that game plan. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, my new staff is just incredibly young and eager to, to keep things moving forward. And I think they're doing a fantastic job of already engaging our PSAs through text, um, mm -hmm. you know, questionnaires, of course, and just again figuring out ways that we can be more involved with them right. uh, on, on a one-on-one -on -one aspect um, but also you know, reaching out to the community as well letting them know that if there's anything lamar athletics can do um, or lamar volleyball specifically that we want to be able to be a resource for them sure so yeah yeah i know all that sounds pretty generic and cliche but that's what we're, that's what we're, what's happening in real time right. uh, we were just having a conversation about you know how can we be more involved on social media how can we be more involved uh and more of a face right now during this time this is a very scary time for everyone but we also want to make sure that we we don't lose sight and focus on the things that we love and uh, that we don't lose sight and focus on our program and, mm -hmm. and you know part everything that you know, entails at the program there 
Yeah, because there is a future. There is. There's there's a future you know, we're, yeah, we're not stopping here, and yeah. it's very important to keep that in mind mm -hmm. that just uh, what, what we're going through right now as a country, as a nation, as a world, uh, things aren't going to stop. That yeah. you know, eventually we have to continue to push forward, and mm -hmm. now we're making those preparations to do so. All right. Well, not to get too... Uh, into the scuttlebutt about no, these no. things, but what are some of the the day to day things? Like you, you talked about being involved in the community still, but mm -hmm. you know we can't have more than fifty people yeah. together in a room. No, absolutely. So, what does it look like to engage with your community? Yeah, you know, I think um, right now the easiest way to do so is via social media, whether that's you know uh, simple things like reaching out to your alumni and updating them with what's going on here, uh, not only within Lamar University, Lamar University athletics, but the Southland conference in general. I think that's one really easy way. Uh, as we all know, the, the world of social media has expanded beyond anything we could have ever imagined. So Absolutely. whether that's daily video posts, um, uh, any kind of graphics, any kind of, uh, in, engagement from that aspect. You know, I know for us personally, we're still going to be talking a lot about our summer camps coming up in July, as we are hopeful that those summer camps will be able to, um, you know, continue as planned. And, yeah. and if so, we want the, the community involved in that. We want mm -hmm. them to know that that is an option for them, that as hopefully we, we get back more and more into normal daily life, that they have that available to, you know, kickstart and, and uh, you know, re-jump re their, their volleyball passion and love and their involvement with it. So as far as specifics, I don't have that for you right now, honestly. That's this okay. is all still so very new, but yeah. I can tell you that me and my staff are working very, very diligently to, mm -hmm. to come up with those things. Um, and, and you know, the other thing too is reminding that the community and just the volleyball world in general, athletics world in general, that your coaches are still here. Mm -hmm. you know, regardless if we're on a dead period or what's going on right now, mm -hmm. uh, we're still available via email, text, phone calls. Um, and I think that's always the biggest thing is to be a resource any way you can for um, you know, the families of the student athletes and the student athletes themselves. Yeah, because uh, as we've talked about, we had Marco Born on previously, mm -hmm. and he talks about the family atmosphere mm -hmm. at Lamar, how that's an important mm -hmm. part of daily life here at Lamar yeah. University. And I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's pivot a little bit and in the midst of all this, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, you added two people to your staff, and mm -hmm. you've only been here a little bit over a month and a half. Two months. Two months. So, I, you know what? It feels like two. It's weeks gone sometimes. by. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so fast. <laughs> uh, so, talk about uh, some of the things that you wanted to do coming in here to Lamar University, both as the head coach, and then what your goals are for uh, your assistance in this program. Yeah. Wow, that's a great question. It's fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, paid to ask questions, I yeah. guess so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess I should have been better prepared on that one. Oh, geez. Uh, no, I think um, you hit on it just before, um, just for transitioning the, the family mm -hmm. atmosphere. And I think that's always been something that's really been appealing to me here at Loire, you know, just within the athletics program itself and the campus as a whole is the more and more I've learned. And so making sure that we brought in a staff that really resembled that and mm -hmm. valued that as well. And I think Missy and Bijane, um absolutely embody that. I think the things that we want to do is uh, the things that we've always talked about is, you know, rebuild this program to its, its, its past glory. Now that's mm -hmm. not going to be an overnight thing. It's not going to be a year one thing. It's going to take time. Right. You know, but part of that building process is making sure we're establishing a culture based on family, mm -hmm. um, based on academic support, athletic support, um, right. and really empowering our student athletes to be individuals. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the coolest things about our job is that we get to watch these young adults um, progress, mature, and grow um, mm -hmm. into the best versions of themselves. And the way I Absolutely. believe that we do that is, like I talked about just now, is empowering them as individuals. You know, I always tell them, Look, listen, if you're goofy and you're out there and you're a character, be that person. You know, I'm a lot like that sometimes. I can be a little over the top. I'm sure. afraid to admit it. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you're a little more shy and reserved, that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. I think that that helps develop a good balance and a, a good sense of bonding, too, with different uh, personalities coming together. But we want to empower them to be themselves. We never want to ask them to change, and we want to help them develop within those means, again, much like a family. Yeah, absolutely. So this doesn't impact volleyball so much as the spring sports, but uh, we heard, you know, first that the seniors that had their years cut mm -hmm. short, they're now getting another year of eligibility. And so are, you know, the juniors, sophomores, freshmen that were all involved. So 
as a, a coach that daily deals with student athletes, what do you think their mindset was first having this season ripped away from them and then now having the chance to have a, a whole entire other season to come back? Talk us through as a coach what that would mean to you, you know, if, if this had been you on this on the spring side that had a, a season cut short. Yeah. And then what it means to have a chance to have all those athletes back and to, to work into the future with another year with that program. It is just so hard to even fathom being a fall sport. But what I will say is from talking with some other fellow head coaches, you know, there is some uncertainty right now. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's genuinely excited for all of our spring sports student athletes. Yeah. The fact of the matter is that as, as much as we were disappointed to have our season canceled, um, this was much more impactful for them. And just the fact that NCAA recognize that and, and are willing to work to do something for those student athletes, I think is tremendous by them. Mm -hmm. I also find this as a tremendous opportunity for those senior student athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have always said I, I'm jealous of every one of our student athletes because I never had that opportunity to go and do that in the college ranks, you know. And so just the fact that they get another opportunity to complete their season, hopefully the way they want to, I think is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. As far as what that looks like moving forward, you know, I know I don't know. Um, you know, for us, it, it would be uh, I think a lot of excitement, um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of uh, figuring out what that's going to look like a as far as training roster. and yeah. much bigger roster, training, travel, and all those things that come along with it. But those are to me exciting challenges because again, we do have the unique opportunity to get those student athletes back. Absolutely. And what would you say to the seniors that? because of this and other extenuating yeah. circumstances decide not to come back to Lamar? I think you have to respect their decision. Mm -hmm. I, I think when you look at it, whether you know, you're know you a fifth year senior, a four year senior, et cetera, you have dedicated a lot of time, mm -hmm. um, blood, sweat, tears, all kinds of physical and um, you know mental emotions Absolutely. into each and every sport. And if you decide that it is now time to, to walk away from that, I think you have to respect that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at some point we all have to grow up and get a quote unquote, you know, real job. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and some of us are more than ready at this moment and some of us need more time. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think whatever decision is made by any of one of our senior student athletes, it's one that you have to respect. It's one you have to support. And I think it's one that they're going to make uh, using their heart and head, you know, not uh, making a, just a rash decision. And, and because of that, I think that's what makes it such a, um, I guess such a, for lack of a better term, respectful choice by them. All right. Well, let's uh, pivot a little bit to more lighthearted discussion okay. now. Uh, what has been your favorite moment? Uh, I know you haven't been here that long, but your favorite moment of the 2019-2020 season, uh, you know, before it was cut short or, or when you came here from your previous school, Wofford, all the... Just talk us through your favorite moments of this last athletic year. Oh, man, that's tough. Okay. Uh, definitely, I'm just going to throw that out there. Shout out to the team. Uh, the baseball video was incredible. The yes, amount of likes and comments I got from coaches from every spectrum of sport was, was just so immensely cool. And it was such a fun experience. And I had no idea it was going to turn out that way. So that was a really cool experience. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, other favorite moments from from the previous athletic season. You know, at, at Wofford, very fortunate to have coached many great student athletes in, in our time. Um, and, you know, the fact that I was able to, to help coach, um, you know, a player that's going to go down as one of the best players, if not the best player in program history, um, just breaking all kinds of records and seeing her growth from her freshman year through her senior year, I think, was was very impactful but i could say that for all those seniors and juniors and sophomores that absolutely you know i left behind um just to share that final season with them i think was just extraordinary mm -hmm. uh, getting here and receiving as warm of a welcome as i had from not only lamar and athletics and the campus but specifically from the team mm -hmm. has just been an overjoyous feeling I, I could not have asked for a better group of you know young student athletes that mm -hmm have just completely trusted in, in what uh, we've talked to them about, what we've implemented and the things that we're doing. And just to have their support and, and, and their love and their kindness and um, really kind of their bought in mentality has been one of the coolest experiences. They have made my job extremely easy. 
And as a head coach or as a coach in general, if your student athletes can make your job easy and they can make it enjoyable, I mean, there's no better field than that. Absolutely. Maybe winning a championship, but yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so with all the stock ups for this COVID-19 moment, we've seen people, you know, stocking up on toilet paper, on canned goods, things like that. But everybody also has that one thing that they just have to have stocked at their house. What would you say is your one guilty pleasure that's going to help carry you through this time? Um, you know, sadly enough, the Girl Scouts did a number on me. Okay. I am a sucker for Thin Mints. Gotcha. So, okay. um, you know, $5 boxes, I have bought many and I am plenty mm -hmm. stocked. They are in the freezer ready to go. All right. So, yes, uh, Girl Scout Thin Mints. Okay. Well, the last question we have for you today is what is the thing you are most looking forward to when we really get back into the swing of things in August? It's just being around our team all the time again. That's the thing I'm going to miss most, honestly, is not the fact that we can't train right now and not the fact that we can't go and compete with other teams. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to miss the most is being around them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I think they've really embraced this open door policy. They come in my office on a daily basis and take it over and write all over my whiteboard. And I haven't changed it since the day I got here. I'm afraid to erase it. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. miss those memories. Um, but I am, I, I already miss them and they're on spring break. So being around them again, just the whole team collectively, uh, I cannot wait for that. That is probably what I'm looking forward to the absolute most, of course, training and playing volleyball and getting in the gym. Those are all things that I have a constant hunger for, but, uh, just being around them again, I, I think that's going to be the, the coolest thing. All right. Well, thank you very much for sitting down yeah. with us today. Thank you. Air high five to end this. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Woo, perfect. All right. Well, again, this has been uh, chatting with the Cardinals. Uh, we hope you really enjoyed your time with us today. Uh, and just moving forward, we're here for you. Uh, Lamar Athletics is a family, and we really care about uh, Beaumont the Southeast Texas area, and all of our Lamar fans everywhere. And as a final reminder, wash your hands.